Senate Banking Committee Chairman Democrat Chris Dodd says he will work with Tennessee Republican Bob Corker to try to write bipartisan bank reform legislation. Senator Corker is joining us now from Capitol Hill. So what's the bottom line of this legislation? Not everybody's for it, particularly here in New York, Senator. Uh, you know, we'll have to see what the bottom line is, but certainly a big piece of it is dealing with resolution and systemic risk in a way that the whole notion that any company in the country is too big to fail is basically a sponge from the American vocabulary. So I think uh, people all across the country would agree that that's not a concept that needs to be a part that's of American sure. capitalism. So very, very important part of the legislation that I hope, uh, hope we'll be able to pass. Well, Senator, let's not bury the lead, and that is that we're seeing something now that a lot of Americans have been hoping for, and that's Republicans and Democrats working together. Let me then just bring this to you. Where is ranking member Shelby on this? Does he ultimately have to sign off on these negotiations? And do you think he will? Well, you know, I have the greatest respect for Senator Shelby, not just as a senator, but, you know, candidly, he's a friend and I like him. They had reached impasse uh, on Thursday night. It's happened a couple of times. Uh, senator Shelby's staff was writing their own bill. Senator Dodd's staff was writing their own bill, obviously uh, that's the makings of a legislative train wreck and yeah. I just feel like we've had a lot of bipartisanship on this bill. This is something that that all Americans ought to be able to join in and support. Um, I hope that we're able to bring a lot of people on board over time, but certainly something that I believe is important to our country and needs to be done. So how do you prevent financial institutions from getting bailed out, from getting a piece of either the Federal Reserve Board, which was originally supposed to just bail out uh, safety deposits, uh, savings deposits, how do you pre keep it to what it was intended? Not getting the taxpayer to bail out the, the Wall Street yeah. financiers. You know, if you think back about what was said during the time that TARP was discussed and all of that, there wasn't a resolution mechanism for these highly complex financial institutions to fail. There wasn't a way for them just to wind down in an orderly way. A disorderly wind down of these organizations is obviously disruptive. So one of the big components is making sure that, that uh, in fact, you have that resolution mechanism in place and people know that you will absolutely use it. That's number one. I think we saw a couple of days ago that investors are starting to question some of the large comp financial institutions that we have in the country because they believe we'll actually pass something like this and therefore they're considering downgrading some of the larger institutions because they are more susceptible to failure if we have a resolution like this. So that's one step. Another step is actually having a mechanism that's in place that will be funded by the industry, not by the taxpayers, in the event that an organization fails. So those are two steps that I hope uh, we'll see the light of day and, and hopefully we'll never again on Fox Business or any other program talk about any entity in our country being too big to fail. Senator, just uh, yesterday we had Larry Summers on, I'm sorry, the day before Larry Summers, the president's top economic head, and, and he specifically said that it's lobbyists who have descended upon uh, Washington and inside the Beltway crawling through lobbyists on behalf of big Wall Street banks who are preventing this from happening. Are the lobbyists pressuring you? Have they come to your office? Have they said, take the teeth out of this thing, Senator? Or, or, no. And are you shutting the door in their face? You know, there's only been a couple of uh, institutions that have questioned uh, whether having legislation like this is appropriate. I, I think that, that by and large, all the good actors, all the, the organizations that consider themselves to be well run, uh, all of them embrace the fact that uh, even discussing this type of thing is, is a foreign type of conversation for this country. So that's just not true. I mean, I, I'm not trying to argue specifically. I didn't hear his comments, but I can just tell you from our office viewpoint, everybody, everybody understands we've got to have an appropriate mechanism to unwind these companies so that we're not placed in the same position we were placed in a year and a half ago ever again. About a week ago, Paul Volcker, the hero of, of squeezing inflation out of the economy about 20, 30 years ago, 
came out with his concept, which was essentially going back to the days when we had this separation between commercial banks and financial institutions. That as a means of protecting the taxpayer from bailing out the rich guys. Are you in favor of yeah. that or like your associate Chris Dodd against it? Uh, well, actually, I think Chris was more favorable towards it than, than I was. I, uh, he I spoke say out clearly that, against Paul Volcker last week, saying it's too yeah, late in yeah. the game to change this piece of legislation. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think the timing was his issue. Look, I, I respect, you know, look, Paul Volcker is a revered figure here. He's the guy that took stuck, tough positions in the late 70s and early 80s fighting inflation. And I think all of us agree with, with the concept of trying to figure out a way to, to limit the risk that is taken by organizations that basically put our system at risk. I think there are different ways of getting there, looking at capital requirements. I think for, for us as a Congress just to arbitrarily say that you cannot do this, this, and this maybe isn't the right way to do it. But I think there are ways of getting at the point that uh, Paul Volcker was trying to make. And I think that's what we're trying to do here. So look, again, when he comes here, we listen, we respect him. I think we might try to get at the same thing in a little bit different way. Uh, Senator Corker, let me go back, if, if you'll indulge me, to Senator Shelby, because he, of course, is, is certainly crucial here, but wasn't getting a lot done. As you mentioned, he had a different bill running concurrently with what Senator Dodd was doing. Do you get the sense that you will also have to fight powers within your own party that don't want to negotiate with the Democrats on this? I, you know, I don't know. I, I take one day at a time. Uh, look, this is, again, a piece of uh, legislation that it's hard to understand how there's really any partisan difference. This ought to be that one piece, if we do nothing else this yeah. year, that we do in a bipartisan way. And there will be some issues, no doubt. Uh, dealing with the whole issue of consumer protection and how that's done and there has to be a balance. We cannot have an independent organization that's out there creating rules and havoc and basically uh, jeopardizing the safety and soundness of our fin financial institutions. But I think there's a way to get that in the middle of the road and what I've asked uh, Senator Dodd as we go forward in these discussions, let's put that off on the side Let's figure out all these other things that are more technical in nature. Uh, let's try to reach agreement on those and come to the issue of consumer protection at the end after we know there's the makings of something that might be substantial and very beneficial to our country. And then let's try to make sure, uh, and I think he knows where I stand, I cannot, uh, uh, you know, a, a deal breaker for me as an independent organization there. Mm. Let's make sure that we do it in a way that uh, is in balance and certainly doesn't cause consumer protection to trump safety and soundness. I think there's a way for us to get there and uh, certainly I, I look forward to trying. Sounds a little like health care. Don't, don't accept the whole basket, but uh, take pieces of it and agree where you can agree. That's exactly right. Listen, one of the things that, that we definitely need to do on this bill is only focus on the things that need to, to be, be done. done. Right. And right. I, think we, I think we're committed to making sure this isn't a Christmas tree uh, where you end up with all kinds of things that are unnecessary. Exactly. So I think that's yeah. where Washington gets out of hand trying to do too much at one time. And I, and I thank you for bringing that up. Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank good, you. good information and, and certainly developments that may be embraced by a lot of people in this country.